Happy Father's Day to the dads who are here, and happy Father's Day to the dads who are joining us online. At the beginning of this week, my brother called me and he said, Gerald, what are you getting dad for Father's Day? And I paused for a moment and I said, I said, Ted, it's a pandemic. Do we have to get him anything? <laughs> yeah, because I'm starting to sound like that little boy who said that Father's Day was just like Mother's Day, except you could spend less money. <laughs> we are in the third week of our New Normal message series. As overused as it may seem, when new and normal come together, it tells us that we are on the verge of a major shift. As followers of Christ, we are called not only to embrace change, but to see it as an opportunity to grow. For a disciple of Jesus, new normal is not only about how we live our life, but also how we see our life. During these weeks and months, families have felt the impact or possibly more than, than most. With the sudden and the extended closure of schools, many parents have found themselves balancing work from home and childcare, all the while having to learn how to homeschool at the same time. Grandparents have felt the pain of being cut off from their grandchildren. School ended this past week, but most summer camps can't open. And I know for us, I was so disappointed when we had to cancel most of our summer activities for the kids, both the summer adventure for the little ones and then the, the mission trips for our teens. And those daycares and summer camps that can reopen, they have to follow complicated instructions and follow so many restrictions. There is so much anxiety right now around simple decision making. I know many pa families are asking themselves, is it even safe for me to let my child go to play at a friend's house or to sign them up for a summer camp? How do we face summer? And this is a time which should be carefree, but how do we face it now with any sense of optimism? How do you protect the mental health of your family? It feels like we're entering a new territory, but with no roadmap and no compass. And to top it all off, how we adjust and how we respond to this new normal has now become a polarized political issue. Today's gospel begins with Jesus speaking to the 12. He says, fear no one. We all have fears from fear of losing a job to a fear of spiders to a fear of making the wrong decision. I used to never be afraid of spiders until earlier this week. This is what happened. I went to lay down for bed and right before I shut off the light, I noticed there was a spider it was probably a little spider, but it felt really big at the time. Going across the wall. And I said, well, he's all the way over there. I'm just gonna shut off the light and go to bed. And I shut off the light, and then I'm laying there, and I'm thinking to myself, where's that spider going? Is he gonna come bite me? <laughs> so I turn on the light, and sure enough, there he was still there on the wall looking at me. And I said, well, I've gotta take care of this so that I can sleep. So I got a, a piece of paper, and I was going, I didn't wanna, I don't know if I should say this in church. I didn't want to smoosh him on the wall, so my thought was I could kind of capture him and then, well, deal with it. So I get a piece of paper. I go over to the wall. He's still there. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. And I didn't know this could happen, but the spider jumped at me, <laughs> leapt. I ran across the room, and then I couldn't find the spider, and now I haven't slept in three days. <laughs> Fears can paralyze and choke us. When fears paralyze and choke a leader, they are prevented from making the important decisions they need to. 
for us. Misplaced fears paralyze and choke us from taking the next step on our discipleship path, or they prevent us from reaching out to someone who we need to. Three times in today's gospel, Jesus told us not to fear. He said, not one sparrow, not one little bird falls from the sky without your father's knowledge. Jesus strengthens and fortifies our hearts against fear. He does this by reminding us that God is always in control, even in this new normal. And it's true. Whatever challenge is before you most right now, whatever is weighing on your mind most right now, God has in control. And God knows that it's going to work out, and God knows how it's going to work out. But like a good father, God doesn't simply want to take our pains or our challenges away. Rather, he wants to grow us through them. Specifically, God wants to grow your confidence and your trust, not in yourself or in anything earthly, but in him. So much of what we relied on before the pandemic cannot be relied on now. Familiar structures, routines, and creature comforts were upended, but God remained with us. For, despite, for disciples, embracing a new normal is about letting go of our fears and learning to trust God. For me, it's about letting go of fears of pastoring our community and letting it be replaced with peace. For fathers on this Father Day, God is trying to remove your fears about not feeling like you're good enough for your children or your spouse and replacing it with love. For us as a community, our, God is trying to remove our collective fears and anxieties and replace them with concern for others instead of uh, concern for ourselves. And the way that Jesus seeks to do, us, to do this is by telling us to let go of all fear except fear of the Lord. We read in the Gospel, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, fear of the Lord is not the sort of fear of someone who wants to avoid punishment. Fear of the Lord is more about love and respect. It's a fear of offending. It's like dads with their children. Your children should want to follow your lead, not because they're afraid of your punishment, but because they love you and respect you and do not want to disappoint you. When we have that sort of love for God our Father, we are on the path to wisdom, which is transforming. With fear of the Lord, our new normal is an invitation to embrace change as an opportunity to grow. It encourages us and it challenges us to glorify God in our actions and then to change or to part with those actions which do not glorify God. The family is called the domestic church. For most of us, it was the place where we first encountered God's love and God's blessing in a unique way, hopefully free from fear. The love that is experienced in a Christian family is meant to model the love that flows from the heart of God himself. A silver lining of the pandemic was the opportunity to rediscover an old idea. The Catholic home is the church, the domestic church. It's central to faith formation 
It's a starting path for children on the path of knowing and loving Jesus. That's why no matter the age of yourself or the age of your kids, it's so helpful in your home to have either a prayer room or a, a prayer corner, a place where you can go to step away from everything and renew your trust in the Father. In our culture, the focus on the multitude of national and world problems can be overwhelming. Maybe the stress that you feel in your family right now is overwhelming. Mary, the mother of God, faced all of these things when she stood at the foot of the cross. Mary was able to stand firm because she had the fear of the Lord, which is rooted in love. And the question for you, the question for me, the question for us as a community is this. Can we have that same love and trust in the Father?